Hey everybody, Doug Rucker here with Doug Rucker School and DougRuckerStore.com. Today I'm coming to you talking about downstream injectors. Man, so many. Hey, I uh, had a viewer ask about doing an in-depth video on downstream injectors. I don't know how in-depth I can get, but I am going to talk about downstream injectors and hopefully... Um, keep things kind of simple for you and explain some things. Um, simple and basic is what I shoot for. So I uh, hope this video helps you and we're gonna talk about downstream injectors next. Okay guys, so talking uh, downstream chemical injectors, there's several different types and styles, sizes of downstream chemical injectors. Anybody that knows me knows that I love downstream injecting. That's my preferred method to clean uh, a house or a building. Um, it's the original soft wash method to me. It's the way I was taught back in the late 70s. Uh, early 80s when I began pressure washing as a high school kid working for a company but uh, so there's different types of uh, injectors that are out there different brands and all as I, as I was mentioning um, some of the ones uh, that you can get are adjustable the adjustable just simply means that you can adjust the ratio of the chemical coming out. I'm gonna talk about ratios in, in a little bit, but this allows you to open it fully. For instance, on this dual port injector or this single port injector. So you can open this all the way up um, to get the full ratio, or you can close it down using this adjustable knob i've you know never used these I, well i did early on in my career um, but really just eventually found that they weren't really useful because in using bleach and cleaning houses it was just always stayed open um, never really turned it down never found the need to do that so um, i quit using these and went to the fixed style and the fixed dial is what's the most popular for uh, pressure washing, house washing, um, soft washing houses and things of that nature. This is the general pump hydraw that we sell here. Um, very popular, these come in the three to five or the five to eight gallon per minute um, sizes. And so mainly what you have to remember is that downstream injection is just a nor another form of getting your uh, solution your bleach mix uh, onto the surface and uh, it's very convenient it's much faster to clean a house downstream injection than using a dedicated pump and having to use another hose to uh, rinse so that's why it's really my favorite way, especially since we use the Shirts Box remote system um, to turn our chemical flow on and off. Um, it's just very, very convenient, much faster. So that's kind of uh, the downstream option uh, injectors that are available out there. Lately, uh, you've been seeing a lot of people using the uh, check valves that you put onto a downstream injector it looks like this and so what you're doing is you're removing the little ball and spring in there that is basically the check valve original check valve for uh, a downstream injector which turns the flow of the chemical being drawn up through your hose um, now you eliminate the ball and spring your injector is going to last a little bit longer and um, get a little bit higher draw rate as well so you can get a little bit stronger mix when you have a, a check valve like this installed on your downstream injector versus it just being without one like this okay so let's talk a little bit about the ratios that you can draw most downstream injectors you're going to get probably uh, eight to one and higher they're advertised at 20 percent draw rates 
but you have to understand that that's done in a, a laboratory or um, testing inside with no restrictions. Um, they don't really test it going through 200 feet of hose. It's not field tested, that 20% draw rate. So by the time you put this on the machine, you put your hose on, you've got all the restrictions that come with the hose, like a gun, um, 90s, uh, couplers, whatever, you're going to lose some uh, percentage uh, of that 20% and may get 12 to 14 at the highest if everything is perfect, okay? You got the strongest bleach, you've got um, the proper hose run, just a lot of variables are gonna go into what your dilution ratio is coming out at the gun. A lot of people ask me, what's my ratio coming out of the gun? And I, I tell them, I don't know and I don't care because when I'm downstream, all I'm looking for is it what? changing the color of that algae that's on uh, the surface. And so if it's not doing that, then I know, for instance, on stucco, you got black mildew on there. And sometimes downstream, it's just not strong enough to affect that or change the color of it. So I need to pull out either the pump up sprayer or uh, my dedicated soft wash pump system, uh, like the King Slinger. So um, that's basically uh, your draw rates um, are going to be the highest you might get. Everything being absolutely perfect is maybe 12%, but it's usually going to be anywhere from like 8% to maybe 10%, um, even with a double port. Double port is not going to get you a stronger mixture. Um, it's just going to draw more solution for you. Um, but it's not going to increase the percentage that you're getting out there. Um, double ports are great if you're, if you're wanting to downstream two different types of chemicals at the same time, um, like a separate soap bucket um, and a separate bleach bucket or a bleach bucket. And I know some of these colored dyes have become pretty popular. I'm not a fan of them. I don't like them. I don't really find the need for them. Um, but a lot of people like them and that's fine. So that would be a way that you could use a, a, a double port too. Um, but they're basically designed for drawing more uh, or two different types of chemicals or solutions versus trying to get you a stronger mix. So don't be misled that you're gonna get a stronger mix with this if you have two of these hoses running into a bleach mix. It's just not gonna, it's not gonna produce that. At least it didn't for me. So, um, that's the double port injectors. I don't use them. Uh, I just have them here for uh, display purposes. I think these have been sitting around for years when I first tried them um, a few years ago. All right, so basically what happens is on a downstream injector, you've got a hose like this that is connected onto the barb and I do always recommend that you put a hose clamp here, get this all the way to the bottom of the little nut on the uh, hose barb, put your hose clamp on there because these things can uh, kind of open up, especially if you're the type that wants to pull them off and spray WD-40 or something in the hose barb thinking it's going to help it last longer. Um, so what will happen is this hose will widen out and it'll eventually, speaking from experience, start sucking in air and it won't it either won't draw as much or it'll stop drawing. So I always put a hose clamp on mine. Um, if you're one that believes that it won't help or doesn't do anything or doesn't need it, that's fine. Um, I'm just telling you from my experience, that's why I always put uh, hose barbs on them. So what happens is when you use a nozzle that uh, is gonna drop the PSI of your machine, I think it's like 300 or more on the output side of the injector, what happens is as the water flows across from your hose into here, it'll draw the chemical, your bleach mix, up through the siphon hose. And so it will then send it straight on down your hose to your gun. In order to turn that off, most people will use a higher pressure nozzle 
um, that raises that PSI back up and then that creates that activates the little ball in the spring in there which um, turns the chemical flow off so uh, what we do though is we'll use the same uh, nozzle for instance here and I'll explain this again in a minute um, this is our J-Rod system that we use it's got our slingshot shooter tip on it um, and then our uh, soap low rinse low and rinse high nozzle but we don't ever use the rinse high nozzle what we do is we actually apply with these two nozzles the soap low the soap high nozzle and then because we're using the remote we can just hit the remote that'll stop the flow of the uh, chemical coming out of the injector and we can rinse with the same nozzle we don't have to change nozzles or anything like that so uh, but that's basically what happens is if you see on these the, the end of the two nozzles right here and right here the orifice size of those nozzles are smaller and so that's what's going to raise the PSI back up and shut the chemical flow coming across the injector. These two lower the PSI enough so that it draws the chemical through the injector. So even if you have like um, here's a ball valve with no handle on it but if you turn your ball valve all the way open it will draw a chemical coming out of here because the orifice or the hole size here is is wide then you can crack this down just enough to where it creates enough back pressure on the machine and it'll stop the flow so it's all about the orifice size is what's causing it to draw the chemical um, down through up through the hose and down to your gun. So, hope that's understandable. Um, talk a little bit more about nozzles and actually setting up an injector in just a second. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you're getting value, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you get notifications. Uh, give me a like and also uh, leave me a comment, ask a question. Um, I do these things kind of off the cuff. I don't have a script, so I'm just kind of doing all this off the top of my head. So sometimes I um, may not explain things as clearly because it's just kind of running through my head. But uh, subscribe, hit the bell, like, leave me a comment, leave me a question, and thanks so much for watching. Um, as I was talking about the nozzles that we use, these always come when you have a J-Rod for downstreaming. You've got two nozzles that are rinse nozzles. You've got two that are um, soap nozzles. And so again, the higher orifice or the higher, the bigger the hole, the larger the orifice size of the uh, nozzle, that's what's gonna allow you to draw your, your bleach mixture out. This one I'm using the slingshot. One of the more popular ways is to use one, just one of the regular MEG nozzles as a shooter tip. You can do that as well. Um, but this is basically the same thing. These are the type of nozzles that we sell as a J-Rod when you buy the kit. If you want this kit, but you want to put the slingshot nozzle in like I do, then you've got to buy this separately. You've got to buy this full, and then you just don't use this nozzle and use the slingshot nozzle. So that's how your nozzles work. We use this nozzle rarely ever. It's like a zero degree tip, but it will turn the chemical flow off so you can rinse high. But you're rinsing with a lot of mist, so it's gonna take a while to rinse when you're using that nozzle. And you wanna stay off the surface with it too because it can cause damage. This one here is what we use for like cleaning brick or any type of surface that uh, we need to get that mildew off of, uh, give it a little what I call encouragement. Um, so that's the low rinse nozzle. This is the uh, low soap nozzle. So that would be used to apply your bleach mix on low surfaces, brick down below. And of course, this is for two, three, we can even get four stories on this with our eight gallon per minute machine. So that's the nozzles that you use when you're downstreaming. So the, the injectors themselves actually come in different sizes. Um, this one here is a 2.3 
five to eight gallon per minute. The 2.3 means the orifice size in the side of the injector. Uh, you can also get the 2.1, which is three to five gallon per minute. I always suggest that if you've got a five gallon per minute machine, then you use the three to five. Um, if you've got a six, seven, eight, then you want to use the, you may want to use the five to eight gallon per minute um, injector, which is the 2.3. Now, what I do is I use the three to five to 2.1 gallon per minute on every machine that we have. We have four gallon per minute machines, we have five, we have an eight, and we have a nine. And I use this one because I get more bleach mixture coming out, a higher ratio coming out using the three to five gallon per minute on our higher gallon per minute machines like the eight and the nine. Um, so we just use, end up using this one, whether it's the four gallon, whether it's the five gallon, or um, the eight or the nine. So that helps us limit amount of confusion when guys are having to replace one. We just always have one injector, one injector size that goes on all of our machines, and that's all we use. Um, if you wanted to use the five to eight on your eight, that's fine, you can do that. That will actually help you um, just get a little bit more water flow going through versus the um, chemical flow. So you know, like if you're cleaning vinyl siding all the time, you probably don't need as strong as mix using the three to five gallon per minute as you would the five to eight. But we clean a lot of stucco, a lot of brick, um, stone. We, we just have a myriad of different surfaces on homes. We can go to homes sometimes and have four or five different types of surfaces. So um, it's just a better fit for us. Um, you make the choice what you think is best for you, but I really just like using the three to five 2.1 on all our machines. Okay, one thing you've got to make sure that you're aware of when you set up a downstream injector, and I've talked about this before in different videos, is you want to make sure, I don't know if you can see that little arrow down at the bottom. I'm trying to get it. Let's see here. That's right. Let's put it instead of upside down. It's right there. Okay. That's an arrow. Every injector is going to have an arrow somewhere. You can see that one's engraved in. Um, that's telling you that when you install the downstream injector, that you want the fitting <coughs> on this injector that's going towards your gun. Um, that's the water outside. That's the side, wherever the arrow is pointing, that's the side that's going to go to your gun. So on everything that we have, the plug points the way of the water flow on our machines, hose reels, uh, hoses, whatever. So we're going to establish or we're going to put this, the plug end on the side that's pointing, the arrow is pointing to our socket on the other so that when we hook it up to the machine, the hose hooks up here, the coupler hooks up here that goes down to the gun. The chemical mixture is going to flow up this way and then go that way. So that's a common mistake a lot of folks make is hooking up the wrong uh, fitting on the wrong side. So make sure whenever you set it up, that arrow is pointing towards your gun and that'll help you eliminate um, and alleviate that mistake. Okay, we talked about the nozzles, um, different ways of turning your bleach mix off um, and going to rinse water. Uh, one of the most uh, original ways of doing it was doing it with the nozzles that uh, came with your pressure washer. This is the standard gun that most people get um, on some pressure washers that you buy, these come with some of them that we sell, some of them they don't, it just depends on what suppliers and what they include. Um, but you always get a black nozzle, usually you get a black nozzle, a red nozzle, yellow, 
a green and then even there's a white one and these are just different angles of spray pattern um, that you get so you can go from a 40 which is the white uh, 25 15 um, for some reason my phone just took a screenshot <laughs> um, threw me off for a second then the red nozzle which is the zero degree tip a lot of people say throw this away I say don't it can come in very handy um, different things cleaning gutters from two stories if you need a little bit of pressure and the shooter tips not getting that pressure on it just got to make sure you stay back off of it pushing leaves pushing dirt rocks stuff like that in parking lots they can they can come in handy so just don't get rid of them um, you just never know uh, you can also take a little drill bit and drill these out as long as you've got a, a drill press it's going to drill straight into it you don't want to use a handheld drill because you can if it's not completely exactly straight um, but anyway you can you can create a little shooter tip that way if you wanted to but it's got to be precise um, I think the first 10 or 15 times I tried it I ruined some a lot of red nozzles so I just use the slingshot or the other shooter nozzles that are available this is actually a little grip that uh, we get and we can sell um, if you use a wand this is kind of a long this is a gun with kind of a longer wand on it like I said that comes with most units but um, so when you use the black nozzle which is the chemical nozzle that's the one that's going to draw the bleach mix through the downstream injector all of these when you put them on to rinse that these are going to turn the flow of the chemical off coming from the downstream injector the problem with using these for rinsing is it's a lot of pressure and it's a lot of mist and you've got to stay off the surface and so it not only takes longer to rinse a lot of times depending on the soap that you're using it can create more suds and take longer to rinse so these are not really ideal for rinsing it's best to get you a j-rod with the right nozzles the right rinse nozzles so that you get more water flow but at the same time can um, shut the water or the chemical flow off coming from your chemical injector so that's another option there um, another different way like I said we use the shirts remote to turn ours off um, also a bypass injector which I'll go over here in just a minute um, is another way that you can turn the chemical flow off and then also which I'll go over just using two different buckets one with your bleach mix one with your water and moving your uh, siphon tube from one bucket to the other so showing on this portable machine, you can see where the downstream injector is installed there right after the unloader. And so whether you have a portable machine like this or you had one stationed on a trailer or a skid, you could downstream out of a bucket. Um, there you see the siphon tube going into one of the buckets. And so you basically what you're going to do is apply your bleach mix to the surface that you're cleaning. And then when you got ready to rinse, you would simply walk over to the buckets, grab the siphon tube and throw it into the bucket of clean water. And then you could rinse using the same nozzle that you use to apply the mix. Say it was the wide um, let's say it was that black nozzle or one of the wide soap nozzles on the J-Rod or the shooter tip on the J-Rod. So that would give you the ability to rinse and apply your bleach with the same nozzle, um, no matter what you're using it and, uh, save you, you know, a little bit of time, not using the higher pressure nozzles to where you're rinsing mainly using the uh, mist and the high pressure and having to get away from the building or whatever. This would really allow you to flood the surface with water and get a, a much better rinsing, um, rinsing job on the surface. Now on this picture here, you see I've got an actual bypass downstream injector set up. And so when the, uh, your mix comes out of the one bucket, into the injector down through to your hose. If you see down there on the right hand side, 
um, right where it comes off of the unloader, there's a ball valve. And so right there, it's set in the position to where it's going to bypass the injector. So the water is going to come out of the pump. It's going to go down the hose that's in the loop and back up. Um, so that's, that's using the rinse water basically right there. So if you walked over and turned that ball valve and put it into the horizontal position, then it's going, the water is going to go across that downstream injector and cause you to draw your chemical um, or your mix up into uh, your hose so that you can apply your mix. So this is another way to turn your mix on and off is by using a bypass downstream injector. It's also very nice if you're going to switch your hose and go to a uh, surface cleaner. It will restore that little bit of uh, pressure loss and flow loss that you get when you turn it to the bypass position, which um, is in the down position. So it bypasses the injector um, and help you clean concrete better or whatever. But using a down, uh, downstream bypass injector like this is another way um, that you can turn your house wash mix on and off. We uh, Here's a picture of it showing what it looks like on our uh, truck skid unit. So you can put these on any pretty much any type of pressure washer um, and, to, and control your uh, house wash mix going from rinse to your mix uh, just by turning the valve. So this is what the check valve looks like when you use it on a, a downstream injector. You're basically taking the hose barb off of the bottom of the injector and you're going to take the ball and the spring out and you'll leave it out. And then you just simply screw this piece into that part where you took the hose barb out and uh, the bottom of this injector or the bottom of this check valve will have a hose barb where you put your hose onto. And these are, um, they're advertised or publicized to get a draw rates of even up to 20% more. Um, and it does get a little bit uh, stronger mix. I don't know that I've noticed a 20% increase, but it is a little bit stronger. Um, the thing I like about them is it just, makes the downstream injectors last longer because you're eliminating the ball and spring um, as the check valve to prevent, you know, your mix flowing back down or your water flowing back down into the bucket and using this one, which is a stainless steel, it's much stronger. Um, and just, it, it's just better to use one of these I have found. So we use them on all of our downstream injectors. In fact, I'm going to right up above, uh, in the video card, I'll link a video that I made last year, um, when we first started selling these, but you can definitely check those out. Um, if you're interested in something like this, but I highly recommend the downstream injector check valve for, uh, your injectors. Hey guys, again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, uh, give me a like, and hit the notification bell. That way you get notifications anytime I come out with new uh, educational material. Uh, but most of all, like I always say, leave me a comment, leave me a question, just let me know uh, if there's anything that I can help you guys with. And by the way, don't forget about the online video school um, available to anyone outside of the Houston, Texas area. Um, man, it'll drastically help you cut your learning curve. Um, over 250 videos. You also have an option that you can take tests for roof cleaning, house washing, uh, concrete cleaning, property protection. Uh, I've had this school probably for almost 10 years. Uh, the very first online pressure washing school to ever uh, come out. And of course now there's just videos all over the place, but if you're looking for something where you can go to one spot and just get great content on a wide variety of pressure washing, soft washing, commercial, residential, um, man, it, it's, it's only $449. It's a lifetime membership. You never pay another dime. You get access to every video that's on there as well as any video that I post in the future. But I wanted to talk real quick about the pressure washing gun assembly. Um, this is the gun we use when we're downstreaming. It's a nice, short, compact gun. 
Um, gives you the ability to also put on longer wands if you need to. And as a matter of fact, I'll link a video in the card right above that I did uh, early last year on this. It was part of a, one of the buy day Fridays. So just ignore the price, uh, the sale price, because they're not on sale right now. But um, it'll go a little bit more in depth about this gun and why I like it, why we use it. But that's the gun that we use anytime we're downstreaming houses because it's just so compact, easy to use, and um, has a gun swivel on it so that you can rotate your nozzles from a horizontal to vertical position or whatever anytime you need to. Well, I mentioned the online video school uh, a few minutes ago and just wanted to be, give a big shout out to Ricardo Guerrero down in Tampa, Florida, who's a kind of a recent online member of the online video school. I had some jobs down in Largo, Florida, the Clearwater, Florida area where I'm from that I had to travel down and do. And um, just through a unique uh, set of circumstances and timing, um, invited Ricardo to come out. It was a pleasure to meet him and his dad, but Ricardo came out for some, actually just some training to kind of watch and see what we did. Um, I had my old buddy, Josh Harris. He came up from Vero Beach to help me on these jobs. Had a couple other guys, a couple other subs I hired too, but Ricardo and his dad came out um, the first day that we were there. And then um, I also actually hired Ricardo to do some work for me, subbed him out, paid him, uh, for cleaning some curbs and uh, light pole stands. He did a wonderful, excellent job, but uh, real impressed with Ricardo. He's a real go-getter, very, very eager to learn. He's, I could tell he's a very detail-oriented, um, pretty much a perfectionist, and uh, just did an awesome job cleaning those curbs and light pole bases for me on one of the branches of hospitals that we did. And uh, so that's something that I do from time to time when I travel. I'll find if, if, it, if the job warrants it, I'll invite some students out, um, whether they are an online student or have attended my school here in Houston that we do every uh, month. So uh, just keep that in mind. It's always good to stay in front of me and let me know where you're from and all that kind of stuff. Um, and just love to help guys out and bring them out sometimes on these jobs. Uh, the great thing about Ricardo is he didn't slow us down, asked a lot of questions, but uh, his timing when he asked the questions was when we weren't working. He didn't bother us or didn't interrupt us, um, but just had a real keen eye for the detail and how we work the wands and all that stuff. So it was a pleasure meeting him. Great hooking back up with Josh Harris, like I said. Um, just had an awesome time. So the online video school, and then also once a month here, I do, uh, training also in Houston, hands-on training, PressureCleaningSchool.com is where you can get all that information. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, like I said, if you have any questions or have a comment, please, uh, do that down below. Uh, love to help you guys out any way I can, and we'll talk to you soon.